Smash Remix is one of the latest and definitely one of the greatest Smash Bros mod packs. Adding in new stages, new game modes, and of course new characters, everything is just top-notch quality. And any Smash mod worth its salt is going to have some great costumes with cool references for their characters, and Remix is absolutely no exception. Not just for their own new characters, but for the base roster as well. Every official character from Smash 64 gains at least a couple of new costumes costumes and some get even more than that. So let's dive into the costume origins for Super Smash Bros. Remix. Also please subscribe. Mario's first new color scheme is the classic white and red fire flower color scheme. This wouldn't make its debut in Smash until Brawl nearly a decade after Smash 64, so it's really cool to see in Remix. For the second color scheme, Smash Remix opted to use Mario's color palette from his classic appearance in Super Mario Bros. This one feels really weird to see, because normally you only really see it in its 2D sprite form, but I still think that it was executed well nonetheless. Donkey Kong's first color palette is this pink one, which will be familiar if you've played Smash 4 or Ultimate. This color is inspired by Donkey Kong Jr. the second, a variant of Donkey Kong Jr. who served as the Player 2 character in Donkey Kong Jr. Math for the NES. Next we have a fan favorite, White DK. This is inspired by the coloration from Smash, which itself is known as Yeti DK, possibly inspired by Eddie the Mean Old Yeti from the Donkey Kong Country TV show. Finally, we have this yellow color scheme, which is also taken from later Smash titles. This costume is inspired by one of the possible colors that Donkey Kong can have in DK King of Swings Jungle Jam mode. Link's first new color is a black tunic, which is brought over from his color in Super Smash Bros. Melee. This color scheme is meant to represent Dark Link from Zelda 2 and Ocarina of Time, but of course Smash would make this a more direct costume later on. And Link's other new color is a yellow tunic. This use of the color in particular is likely based on Ocarina of Time, with Smash 64's Link being based on that game. You can cheat in different colored tunics into the game, with yellow being a common choice and supposedly a tunic that was scrapped from the finalized game. For Samus' first new costume, Smash Remix gives her the Light Suit, a suit from Metroid Prime 2 Echoes for the GameCube, and one of the possible colors that Samus can have in both Smash 4 and Smash Ultimate. The second new costume is one Samus first officially got in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, the Fusion Suit, which comes from Metroid Fusion for the Game Boy Advance. Yoshi's first costume is the fan favorite Black Yoshi, and the second is White Yoshi. Both of these are pretty popular Yoshi colors, and they were probably chosen for Smash Remix because they're both colors that originated on another N64 game, Yoshi Story. Kirby's first new costume is his monochrome costume, plucked straight from Melee. This one at least makes sense in the context of the 64 era though, with it being based on Kirby's origin on a monochrome system, and his white appearance on the North American and PAL box art for Kirby's Dream Land. His second costume is the purple and blue costume with yellow eyes and mouth, which is based on the appearance of Meta Knight while unmasked. Fox's first new costume is an all-black outfit with grey boots and a red scarf. This is based on the similar costumes that Fox has in Brawl, Smash 4, and Ultimate which is referred to as Dark Fox, which is a Smash original color scheme. Next we have a blue outfit with accents of white, which from everything I can tell is a Smash Remix original costume which is made just to give him a proper blue outfit, rather than just relying on purple. Pikachu's first new costume is a yellow party hat. While this color is Smash original, it's actually based off of content that was scrapped from the original game, where he was intended to have this yellow party hat. Smash Remix simply took that concept and actually implemented it. The same is true for this next costume as well. There's debate as to whether this was an intended costume or some kind of error, but a costume exists in the game's files that partially gives Pikachu this skin color. So Smash Remix went ahead and did it all the way. The hat is original for Smash Remix though, as the costume in the files just reuses the green party hat. Finally, Pikachu gets a purple hat, which is again an original creation by the Smash Remix team. Luigi's first alternate costume is of course his arch rival Waluigi. There's not much more to add there. His second costume gives him a blue hat and overalls with a yellow shirt and emblem. This is based on the Japanese animated Mario movie Super Mario Bros. The Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach, in which Luigi wears this color scheme rather than his expected green. Ness's first new costume gives him a white and red combo for his hat and shirt, with some tan shorts. This is a returning costume from later Smash games, first debuting in Brawl. It's based on Fuel, a character from Mother 3, which ironically is a game Ness never appears in. 
The second color is a variation of another costume from official Smash titles, once again first debuting in Brawl. This dark purple and pink costume officially has a Mr. Saturn sprite on the shirt, which is a race of creatures found in Earthbound and Mother 3, almost serving as a pseudo mascot for the series. However, because of the limitations of Smash 64, the Smash Remix team wasn't able to bring the costume fully over, instead bringing the colors for the costume but leaving the shirt blank. Captain Falcon's first new costume is his now iconic all-gold color scheme that first appeared in Smash 4, though obviously because of Smash 64's limitations, it's not all super shiny. His other new color scheme is an all-red and white one, and I can only assume that this is based off of Octoman, a pilot from the F-Zero series that's a weird octopus alien monster thing, and whose color scheme matches up pretty much exactly with this costume. For Jigglypuff's first alternate costume, it restores what may either be a glitch or a scrapped costume for the game. It maintains her green bow, but instead makes her skin color entirely a green tint to match it. Either way, Smash Remix has brought this back for their build. Along with that scrapped costume, we have another. In the actual game files, this was intended to be a yellow team costume, just like with Pikachu before, but the yellow team ended up being scrapped. The skin is also bugged, keeping the bow green and making only parts of her skin yellow, but Smash Remix has gone ahead and rectified this by making what likely could have been seen in the original game all along. For her third costume, Jigglypuff gets a purple bow. I don't really think this is a reference to anything, it's just a nice color for Jigglypuff. And finally for Puff, we have a black and white color palette. Now this could have two possible origins. First, it could be based on Jigglypuff first appearing on the Game Boy, which was a monochrome system, thus making her black and white. Or it could be inspired by Kirby also receiving a black and white costume, since Jigglypuff is built off of Kirby in Smash 64. And that does it for the base cast of Smash 64's new costumes. However, we are of course nowhere near done because the whole point of Smash Remix is the addition of new characters, so let's dive into these starting first with Ganondorf. Ganondorf's default appearance in Smash Remix is of course based off of his appearance in Zelda Ocarina of Time. His first costume is a purple one, largely taken from one of his color schemes in Super Smash Bros. Melee. However, this Smash Remix version instead gives him bluish purple skin, which is based off of Ganon, the beast form that Ganondorf can take on. The next costume comes to us from Smash Ultimate, a Ganondorf with all white hair. Previous games had this with his typical skin color, but Ultimate updated the costume by also giving Ganondorf blue skin, which is again based on his beast form, Ganon. And our final three costumes are another purple costume, a green costume, and a red costume. These are all taken straight from Melee, Ganondorf's debut game for the Smash series, and they really don't have any other references. The next character introduced in Smash Remix was Young Link, of course using his appearance from Ocarina of Time as well. Instead of the Master Sword, he wields the Kokiri Sword, and instead of the Hylian Shield, he uses the Deku Shield, both used by Young Link in Ocarina of Time. His first color scheme is the White Lavender Tunic, just like Link has in Smash 64 and how Young Link has it in Melee. This color is based off of Link's sprite in the first Legend of Zelda when he has the Blue Ring equipped, giving him a similar lavender shade. The next color is a red tunic, based off the Goron tunic, which allows you to survive in high temperatures without taking damage, and which ironically Young Link can't actually wear. The blue tunic is the next costume, which is based off the Zora tunic. This allows you to breathe underwater, and again, is not actually capable of being worn by Young Link. Next, we have a costume that keeps the green tunic, but gives it accents of yellow and brown, and of course, changes his hair up to be pink. This costume is based off of Link from Zelda A Link to the Past, where his sprite is given pink hair as a result of the limitations of the color palettes on the SNES. Young Link's final costume is a true Dark Link costume, actually making him have that appearance rather than just giving him the black tunic. The next character introduced to Smash Remix was Falco, whose design in the mod is largely based off of his appearance in Melee, but then downgraded in order to match Fox's appearance in Smash 64's base roster. Falco's first three costumes are also taken straight from Melee, red, blue, and green, which are designed for use during team battles, but otherwise don't really reference anything. The next costume is a black color palette, which first appeared in Smash for 3DS and Wii U. This turns Falco's feathers black, similar to a raven or a crow, but outside of that, it simply serves as a dark costume concept. Falco's next color is an orange color scheme. This has appeared in official Smash titles from Brawl onward, though Smash Remix has its own take on the color. It's inspired by Cat Monroe, one of Falco's longtime friends and someone who secretly has a crush on him. Don't tell him. Our next character we're talking about is Dr. Mario. First off, the Doc has red, blue, and yellow alternate colors. While red and blue also serve for team colors, these colors also represent the three main viruses for Dr. Mario's games, Fever, Chill, and Weird. 
Dr. Mario also has a black color scheme, which he has in every Smash game that he's in. The Melee website refers to this as the unlicensed doctor, serving as a sort of opposite to the white coat that he wears in the default color. And finally, we have a green costume, which exists purely for the green team. Following Dr. Mario, we have Dark Samus. Dark Samus never appeared on the N64, so obviously this design is largely original, though it takes beats from her official appearances. The first color scheme is blue and yellow, inspired by the fusion suit that Samus wears during Metroid Fusion. Next, we have the counter to Samus's light suit color, the dark suit. This is a suit Samus wears in Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, but if only one character can have it, it makes sense to give a dark suit reference to Dark Samus. Our next color scheme is a white and green one, which I'm told is an original for Smash Remix, although it does look rather similar to Mecha Ridley, a weapon in the form of a robotic Ridley that's found in Metroid Zero Mission. And then we have a purple and red color scheme, which again is a Smash Remix original. Her final color scheme is silver and red, also seen in her appearance in Smash Ultimate. This color scheme is based off of Dark Samus's concept art, where she instead uses this color scheme rather than the blue one that made the final cut. Our next character is Wario, who is an incredibly unique take on the character as opposed to his official Smash appearances. Wario's first color scheme should be familiar to everyone, as it's based off of Mario's colors. This color scheme is also similar to colors Wario has in Mario Tennis, though with the hat red as opposed to blue. Next we have a sort of aqua and purple color scheme, which is also taken from Mario Tennis as another of Wario's potential color schemes. The next color scheme is a fan favorite, the trans rights outfit, pink and blue. This is another costume that Wario officially has in Smash, based off of the colors given to Mario on various box art pieces for Mario Brothers. Next, we have an almost monochrome color scheme, which is once again taken from one of Wario's possible colors in Mario Tennis. And Wario's last costume is a purple and white combo with a black W and shoes. This appearance is based on his color scheme used in Wario's Woods on the NES. Our next character to tackle is Lucas, the protagonist who was originally supposed to debut in Earthbound 64, but ended up being in Mother 3 for the Game Boy Advance instead. Smash Remix still uses his official design from Mother 3, though. Lucas's first costume is based on Klaus, Lucas's twin brother, complete with his nice gingery hair. The next color scheme is a pink, purple, and blue color palette, based on Kumatora, a party member who joins Lucas in Mother 3 and wields powerful PSI abilities. Next, we have a blue, white, and pink color scheme that also makes Lucas's hair brown. This is based on Duster, another party member from Mother 3. This color also appears in Smash 4 and Ultimate, however Smash Remix made his hair fully brown rather than just, you know, vaguely darker. The penultimate color for Lucas is a brown and yellow scheme, also changing his hair to brown. This color is loosely based off of the similar color scheme of Flint, Lucas and Klaus's father. And finally, we have a costume that gives Lucas a white shirt, green shorts, and red sneakers, which is a color palette based on his original appearance seen in Earthbound 64 prior to that game's cancellation. The only difference is, of course, that the haircut is still the official Lucas haircut rather than the middle part that he had in Earthbound 64. Next up, we have Bowser. This design used for Bowser obviously doesn't look like the Mario 64 version. It seems mostly to be a Smash Remix original take on Bowser's later design, but then retroactively turned into a low-poly model. But it's very slick, I really like it. His first color scheme is borrowed from Melee, but it does have an actual origin as it's loosely inspired by one of the color schemes that Bowser can have in Mario Tennis. Next we have a blue and green color combo, which also existed in Melee, though it does use similar colors to Bowser's original art from Super Mario Bros., just sort of adapted to Bowser's later design. The black and red color palette is up next, which is again found in Melee. This one, however, is just, I think, a simple Smash original color scheme that Remix brought over. The following color scheme is a dark green skin with orange hair. This is inspired by another of Bowser's older looks, his appearance in Super Mario World where he had that sick mullet. And Bowser's final color scheme is a yellow and brown one, inspired by the similar skins from Smash 4 and Ultimate. One of the devs also mentioned to me that they made the bands on Bowser's arms ever so slightly green to be a secret reference to Dio from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Smash Remix also features Giga Bowser as a playable character by hitting a toggle on the character's select screen, making him gigantic and including crazy attributes for all of his moves. Giga Bowser also features alternate colors, however they are all simply one-to-one -one matches with regular Bowser's colors. So there's really no reason to go over the same thing again, but I thought it was worth a mention. The next fighter is our resident Star Fox bad guy, Wolf O'Donnell. 
Wolf's default appearance in Smash Remix is largely inspired by his design for Star Fox 64, you know, based on the little bit of it that we actually get to see. First, we have a pink jacket with purple shorts, an original by the Remix team, largely meant to serve as the red team color. The same is true for this blue color scheme, which was designed with the blue team in mind. Wolf's green color scheme, while also being for the green team, is also loosely based on the colors of Leon Pawalski in Star Fox 64, with green representing his skin and the brownish pants representing his jacket. Wolf's black color scheme is inspired by the same color Wolf has in Smash Ultimate, which itself is inspired loosely by Wolf's design from the previously unreleased Star Fox 2. And finally, we have the purple alternate, which is taken from Wolf's default colors in Smash Ultimate. Our next Smash Remix newcomer is Conker the Squirrel, with the primary inspiration for this naturally being his appearance in Conker's Bad Fur Day for the Nintendo 64. Conker's first color scheme changes his fur color to gray and gives him a pink hoodie along with pink and yellow shoes. This is based off of Conker's girlfriend, Barry the Chipmunk, coming from her appearance in Bad Fur Day. The next costume puts Conker's fur back to its usual color and gives him a red hoodie and red shoes. This is based on Birdie, the scarecrow that Conker meets at the beginning of Bad Fur Day, and the red shirt that he wears. Conker's fourth costume turns him gray once again, this time with a green hoodie and black shoes. This costume is inspired by Rodent the Squirrel, a member of the Squirrel High Command Army that Conker teams up with during the war against the Teddies. Our next color scheme gives Conker a black hoodie with black and white sneakers. This is based on Neo Conker, the appearance that Conker takes on during the Matrix parody portion of Bat Fur Day. And the final color scheme sort of mutes Conker's fur color and gives him a white hoodie and black shoes. This color is based on Professor Von Cripplespack, the leader of the Teddies and a servant to the Panther King. Our next character for Smash Remix is the fearsome Pokemon Mewtwo, whose design is based on Mewtwo's appearance and proportions from the early days of Pokemon. Mewtwo's first color is obvious, a bright green referencing his shiny sprite. However, we can actually link this to being a reference to the same costume from Melee, and it's all in the eyes. In both Smash Remix and Melee, the eyes are purple for this costume, which is actually inaccurate to the official shiny Mewtwo appearance in the main Pokemon games, showing that the Remix dev team used the Melee costume rather than the actual shiny for inspiration. Next we have a red color, which is designed specifically for use on the red team, and likewise we have a blue color, which is designed for the blue team. This blue one also exists in every official Smash title that Mewtwo has appeared in. Next, we have a yellow color scheme, which is again based on a shiny coloration. This was the color palette used for Mewtwo's shiny sprite in only Generation 2 of Pokemon. From Generation 3 onward, the games used the previous bright green color for the shiny. Finally, we have a Cyan Mewtwo, which is a color that was borrowed from Mewtwo's costume pool in Smash 4 and Ultimate. Next, we have the Prince of Altea, Marth from Fire Emblem. All of Marth's costumes are fairly straightforward, being all plucked from Marth's official appearances in Smash. First is the red color scheme, taken from Melee for the red team. And then we have green, also from Melee for the green team. Next we have the black color scheme, which is also from Melee. This color is based on Camu, a recurring character in the Fire Emblem games that Marth also appears in. And then we have the white color, which is also taken from Melee. This costume is based off of Leaf, the protagonist of Fire Emblem Thracia 776, minus the red hair. Finally, we have the gold color scheme, which is taken from Smash for 3DS and Wii U. But this color scheme isn't original to Marth, as it actually comes from Roy's similar gold costume back in Melee, which Marth received in Smash 4's base roster when Roy initially didn't make a return. Our next character is a doozy, the blue blur Sonic the Hedgehog. This design is based off of modern Sonic from the 3D era of Sonic games. The first color scheme is a black one with accents of red, yellow, and white, and I don't really even need to say it. I mean, I'm gonna, that's the point of this video, but I don't need to. This is a Shadow the Hedgehog inspired color. Next we have a red color, which is of course based on Knuckles the Echidna. Third is a green color with accents of black, yellow, and white. This is based off of Vector the Crocodile. After that we have a purple color scheme with white, yellow, green, and black accents. This color scheme comes from Espio the Chameleon, and specifically from his very first appearance in the Sonic series in the spin-off game Knuckles Chaotix. Lastly, we have a yellow color scheme, based on Miles, Tails, Prower. But that's not all, because on top of having his modern appearance, Sonic also has a full set of costumes based on his classic or 2D era design. First up, we have a yellow Sonic with blue shoes. 
This is based on Ray the Flying Squirrel, a character who was designed for the arcade game Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. He's one of the more obscure Sonic characters, mostly appearing in cameos or comics, though most recently he's appeared in Sonic Mania Plus. Next we have another Knuckles color scheme, although this one is a bit on the brighter side in order to more accurately represent Knuckles' appearance in the 2D Sonic games. After that we have another green with orange armbands and red shoes. This is a color inspired by Bean the Dynamite, a woodpecker who first debuted in Sonic the Fighters. Next we have a pink color with orange, purple, and white shoes. This of course comes from Amy Rose, though more specifically it's based on her design from Sonic CD, which is appropriate being from the classic era. And lastly we have Classic Tails, whose colors again have been adjusted to be more classic era accurate being closer to a golden color than strictly yellow. But despite all that, we still aren't done, because Sonic also has a secret form, Super Sonic. And of course, as you would expect, these two have alternate colors. First, we have a blue color, which is based on the blue Chaos Emerald. Next, we have a green color, which while also matching the green Chaos Emerald, is much, much more. This costume has no pupils, and it is quite literally a reference to Broly from the Dragon Ball series, which is hilarious. Sonic going Super Sonic and Saiyans going Super Saiyan has often been compared, so I think this is a very fun reference. And quickly, the red color scheme is based on the red Chaos Emerald, the purple is based on the purple Chaos Emerald, and this lighter magenta color is meant to reference a middle ground between the purple Chaos Emerald and the white or clear Chaos Emerald. And now for the most recent character added to Smash Remix at the recording of this video, Zelda's Secret Identity Sheik, of course based off her design from another N64 game, Ocarina of Time. Sheik's first color scheme comes from Melee, serving as Sheik's color for the red team. Green also comes from Melee, intended for use on the green team. Next up we have a purple color scheme, which Sheik has in both Smash 4 and Ultimate, though Smash Remix took their liberties here to make the costume their own unique creation. Next we have a black color scheme, which is based specifically off of the costume that first appeared in Smash for 3DS and Wii U. And finally we have a red, white, and blue color scheme. This costume is based on the color scheme of Impa and the Sheikah as a whole, from their designs in Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now that does it for what we'll call official Smash Remix characters, but there are still even more that the dev team has squeezed into this mod pack. First off, Mario has his own secret form, Metal Mario. This is actually the boss from the original game, but the team simply took that data and made it a playable character. And of course, Metal Mario 2 has alternate colors. The first is a red medal for the red team, and then we have a green medal for the green team. And then just to complete the set, we have a blue medal for the blue team. Next we have a gold color for Metal Mario, which is based on Gold Mario, a recurring form that Mario takes on in the wider Mario series, first debuting in New Super Mario Bros. 2. And lastly, Metal Mario has a pink gold color, borrowed from the appearance of Pink Gold Peach, a form that Peach takes on that first debuted in Mario Kart 8. I suppose for the sake of completion I'll mention Giant Donkey Kong here as well, another boss character that the Smash Remix team made playable. But there isn't a ton to say here, because it's literally just Donkey Kong but bigger, so he has all of the same color schemes and references that normal Donkey Kong has. The Mad Piano, the enemy from Mario 64, was hilariously added to the game as well as a boss character. But, like every other boss character, Mad Piano is also playable and therefore has color schemes. Unfortunately for us though, there aren't really any elaborate explanations for these colors. Quite literally, the dev team simply Google image searched different colored pianos and then used those as references for all of the colors in the game. I, that, that's literally it, there's really nothing more to say. And the final quote unquote character to mention for Smash Remix is actually a bunch of characters. Every base roster character in Smash 64 has a fighting polygon team appearance that serves during some of the fights in one player mode. The Smash Remix team went ahead and made all of these playable as well, making it a toggle on the base roster for the game. I mean, that's dedication to a mod pack, let me tell you, I would not personally do that. Again, all of these have alternate colors, but they're just basic colors that are used to help differentiate. None of them really have any references to anything at all. And that is every costume in Smash Remix so far, and their origins. Seriously, I just can't sing Smash Remix's praises enough. I mean, every single update they're adding awesome characters and awesome stages, but of course also awesome quality of life and game modes and just things that are making this game super, super fresh. I'd also love to give a big thank you to the dev team for, you know, helping me out with this video. I did a lot of the digging myself, but 
there was some stuff that needed to be fact checked and they were there to look over everything that I wrote down and give me corrections where necessary. So huge shout out to the dev team on a personal note, but also just a shout out for making this amazing mod pack. Of course, if you're interested in Smash Remix, the links will be down in the description. But with all that said, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please go play Smash Remix. It is so much fun. And please also remember to be good to one another.